um, there was an example of a facility where the flare header was made out of carbon steel. And the thing about pressure safety systems is the likelihood of them going off isn't very frequent. You can operate a plant for 20 years and not know that you have a problem. Um, but at any rate, in this facility, the valves went off and it was a high pressure hydrocarbon um, discharge and the carbon steel piping failed due to embrittlement because the um, relieving temperatures were in excess of what the material could take. And so in that case, um, there's an example where the design engineers didn't choose the proper metallurgy for the relieving conditions um, for those valves. So <clears throat> that, that was a really bad, bad accident. They were lucky that um, there were no fatalities in that case. Um, another thing that you need to be very careful about is um, the pipe supports on the discharge of are both on the inlet and discharge of the valve. Um, I've seen field installations where the pipe design was not checked by a mechanical engineer for the thrust and the force effects when the valve lifts. And there was one case where a 4 by 6 relief valve lifted off the pipeline um, and was a trajectory about 40 feet in the air. So. Uh, you really need to be careful about your pipe supports and make sure that it's designed adequ adequately to handle the, the forces that the valve will see. Um, so, in, in regards to flare header design, um, what I would strongly recommend, there's some really good software programs out now, and if you're going to be doing a flare header, I strongly recommend that all the relieving scenarios that you can have are checked through um, one of those programs that can do all the network calculations just to ensure that all of your back pressures at the valves when they relieve do not exceed what the valve design it requires. Um, and again, be sure that you check to, to understand if there's any auto refrigeration effects that you take that into account when you do your metallurgy uh, selection. A friend of mine was telling me about a plant that was built in it was somewhere in the Middle East and they missed it on the flare header materials and they didn't realize it until the plant was already fabricated and ready for startup. And the way the design contractor finally justified the situation was saying, well, if, these, if, if this were to occur, or when this happens, you're going to have to handle it procedurally to ensure that you don't put any stress on any of the piping or equipment until the system warms back up. So that's, in my opinion, not, I, I, if I was the owner of the plant, I'd have a hard time accepting that as a solution. Um, <clears throat> the flare knockout drum and the flare stack and tip, that's, that's another very important aspect. And, and you know, one needs to understand that these calculations are very complex. And being sure that you've gone through all the scenarios and picked out your worst case for the flare knockout drum is critical because if that drum is undersized, most frequently that the net effect will be sending hydrocarbon liquids out of the tip of your flare stack, um, which then results in a rain of fire. So one needs to be very careful to make sure that your knockout drum is sized adequately. Um, Another thing that I discussed was depressurization valves and the tip of the month. Um, the depressurization, depressurization design needs to be worked through very carefully because, again, in that case, you could have the effects of um, auto refrigeration due to the JT effect that those valves are going to see if it's a high-pressure hydrocarbon system. 
Um, in addition, the time in which one needs to blow down um, and the volumes need to be calculated correctly. And I would recommend if one needs to do this that you use a dynamic simulator to ensure that your calculations are correct. So, for any additional information in regards to uh, my tip of the month, please, please go to uh, www.jmcampbell.com uh, tip of the month. And also, I'm very excited about this. We will have a new course coming out soon. And the course title is Process Safety Design. And I believe the number is going to be PS4. So if you have engineers or if you're a design engineer that wants to be better educated in regards to how to approach these systems and ensure that your designs are as safe as possible, um, please look for that class.